All right, confirming everyone can see my screen are okay. Brenda, if you want to give me a thumbs up. Awesome, awesome. Uh, again, welcome everyone. Or right, hold on. Am I supposed to be starting? Melise, did you want to do the start or you want to just keep going? Uh, no, if you can go ahead, Ryan. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, quickly, just a quick check in uh, for Zoom. Again, don't have to have your camera on. I don't mind it being just myself and Brenda going back and forth. But if you did want to hop on when you're asking questions, that'd be great. Otherwise, uh, feel free to change your name so that if you do ask a question, we know who's asking the question. Also, you can use the raise hand feature so that uh, our team can see that you have a question. Always, we know, be respectful and use the chat if you have questions that pop into your mind, but I'm kind of just talking and rambling on, feel free to type it into the chat and we will get to it. Real quick, we do like to acknowledge the peoples of our traditional land. So I would like to begin the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of these lands which we call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nation peoples that call this land home. Please join me in a moment of reflection to acknowledge the effect of residential schools and colonialism on Indigenous families and communities, and to consider how we, how we are and can each in our own way try to move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. All right, so to give you a bit of background on Empowered for X, so it is a physical co-working space that is based in Brampton, but we also do have satellite locations. So one thing that we are really keen on is our virtual business address. So we have offices in Ottawa, Scarborough, Brampton, and soon to be Ajax and Hamilton and spreading out as best we can. So one thing, if you do need a space to work out of, get a quiet space, think of Brampton to come and check it out. Or also if you need support with your business around different consulting with operations or marketing or helping build websites or apps, definitely reach out to the Empowered Forex team and we can support you. So some key trainings that we do, one is the social enterprise certification program. We also have the mental health standard certification, uh, mental health supporting youth certification and the Grant Hunter University. And as I mentioned, we do have virtual office space in Brampton, Scarborough, Ottawa, and Ajax and Hamilton are gonna be coming online soon. The consulting services range from marketing, grant writing, uh, technology building, uh, management, and developing business plans. And one thing to shout out our founder, Chris Beth Cowie, she is the host of BizGrams. So it's a show that you could actually come on with your business or your nonprofit to promote what you do and talk about the, uh, the journey thus far in uh, starting your entity. So upcoming today, we are talking about what grants are out there, giving a bit of an overview how, on how to approach them, but we do also do events where we dig into a grant and actually write it together. So going line by line, question by question. One of the grants that we recently started working on is the Youth Opportunities Fund, which is gonna open in May, but we're kind of getting a head start to make sure that our application is going to be ready. So if you need help with actual grant writing, definitely check out some of our working groups because that's where we really get deeper into the structure of the grants and how to answer the questions. Uh, we always talk about our DIY to modify, which is going from doing it yourself to making others do it for you. And I would actually say doing it with you. So having a project team to help you with different projects Similar to a grant application, you can actually have some of our team members work alongside you. We have the monthly networking event through Jelly Social, and we do an ongoing biweekly financial literacy workshop. So uh, I think it was last Thursday. So 
Next Thursday will be the next session and we range on different topics just to support with building up our financial literacy. As I mentioned, the DIY is the doing it yourself. So consider this free info session as a part of that do it yourself where we can help let you know what's available and then you can kind of do the research and applications on your own. But across the spectrum, we can help you research what grants are out there with our funding summaries. We can help you create that initial blueprint. So answering all the questions that you're gonna see on a grant and having that document to use for future grants. We can be uh, one of your support in reviewing grants that you've already written. Or like we mentioned, you can come to a grant working group so that we can pick a grant and write it alongside you. Or you can just take it completely off your plate and have one of our team uh, write the grant for you. So those are the options when you're working with Empower for X. Always like to thank our Outstanding partners ranging from One Full Circle that's up in Montreal, SETSI that is national, the social economy through social inclusion, Calabash, which is a cooperative of expert service providers. So if you have a service, whether you're an accountant, lawyer, business coach, or a grant writer, definitely think of joining Calabash because they help to curate all these expert service providers and connect them to organizations that get grants and have to hire expert service providers. So make sure that you're on the list so people can spend their grant dollars with you. Uh, the Toronto Community Benefits Network has always been a big supporter of what we do. ZSC, one of our business advisor uh, partners, and Alterna Savings, who is our financial institution of choice. We've been able to create some programming with them namely our ACBN microloan, the Dream Legacy Foundation, which runs the Black Innovation Fellowship through DMZ, which is at Ryerson uh, slash TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University, and Sheridan Edge, which stands for the Entrepreneurship Discovery and Growth Engine, a great free resource. And also they have a cork in space in Mississauga if you're there and wanna check it out. So uh, you're going to be meeting the facilitator, which I feel like you have met, which is I. So we're going to do an overview of grants and touch on, of course, how we can help. A little bit about myself. I do consider myself a social serial wait, a serial social entrepreneur. So I run a social enterprise called Detail Ignite. We provide mobile waterless car cleaning, and we run a youth entrepreneurship training program during the summer. Uh, Service Kingdom is a social enterprise coaching division, but we also have a higher tier uh, division, which is the executive power up, which helps companies actually create that C-level suite team so that to help them scale and actually uh, get investment and grow their companies. Black Panther's Cage, which is secretly in development, but think of Dragon's Den, but with Black founders, Black uh, support and investors all making sure that our companies can get the capital they need to grow. But one big piece is I'm the co-founder of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network. We work with entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage really to figure out what stage your business is in and then help you create a strategy to grow your companies. I'm part of the Empowered Forex business crew. So when we mention having coaches or consultants work alongside you, that is one thing that I'm able to support with. And again, a bit of the story of ACBN, we started five years ago. And again, I was seeing a gap as an entrepreneur myself running Detail Ignites. We were looking to expand and scale our companies across Canada and into the US, but there weren't any black focused business organizations that had that as a mandate. So we decided to bring six other entrepreneurs together said, could we create this entity that would sit down with an entrepreneur, figure out what stage their business is in, and then help them create a strategy to grow their companies. And thus, ACBN was born. We've been, over the past five years, engaged with over 5,000 Black entrepreneurs. We've also been able to partner with over 40 Black-focused business organizations across Canada. So we feel whatever stage your business is in, we're going to be able to point you to the right support that would help you get to the next milestone with your business. Some of the pillars that we do 
I lean on a big one, of course, is entrepreneurship, which is really the foundation saying that entrepreneurship is one of the best tools that we've seen to help one, pull people out of poverty and two, create generational wealth. So I believe everybody should be an entrepreneur in some uh, form, especially if you're young, it's a great time to start a business. But even if you're working somewhere, having a side hustle to bring in additional capital to the home and some benefits of starting a business on the accounting side with write-offs. That's for another uh, session, but something to keep in mind. Of course, convening like this is really important to us, whether it's in person at our networking events or online in these note sharing sessions where we can really just figure out what's out there and share the knowledge and then see how it can help you grow in your journey. That's really what these events are about. And of course, that access to funding, which is why we created our own microloan program so that we're not always sending people out to get funding, we can actually develop some of the funding ourselves. So I like to show uh, a bit of the track record of funding that we have received. And some of them are missing on here actually. Oh, this thing is blocking at the bottom. So you'll see it ranges from as low as $500, and shout out to Now Creative and Access, who was the first grantee of ACBN, the $500, all the way up to over a million dollars, which we got from the federal government and in between. So pitch competition, city grants, provincial grants, federal grants, and support from corporations. I would say any type of funding that's out there that you qualify for, you should be applying. But what I notice is that a lot of times we don't even know what's out there. So that's why we put together these info sessions so that we can now make you aware and so that you don't miss the money just because your application didn't get in. And what I'm most proud of, and I actually should update this because we have more people getting funding after learning about them from either our info sessions or going through our grant our writing work, working groups. So. The investment readiness program, that's one that just closed. There's a few that just opened that we want to make sure that you're aware of. But really finding what's out there, sharing it with you, and then being alongside you to get that application in is where we get our most joy. So any of these applications or any of these funding programs that you see that you qualify for, please let us know that you're interested so that we can support you in getting that application in. One thing that I talk about a lot is this grant writing blueprint, because the grant writing blueprint, a lot of times we'll see multiple grants that we're going for, but I see our clients get kind of stuck where they have to keep starting from scratch. So what we do is making sure that any grant that we find, we're able to create that blueprint ahead of time. So all those questions that you're gonna see, you're gonna be able to answer them ahead of time. So when you see a grant that you qualify for, you're able to, really have about 80% of it done already. And now you're just finishing the last 20%, customizing it to what the funder is looking for. And so it makes it a lot easier to write grants when you're not starting from scratch. We also do a business plan, plan blueprint, which is gonna launch, I believe in May, we're gonna be sending out notification on how to help you get that business plan done so that you can use it as a blueprint for your company. Let's see. One thing that, and actually I'll put this link into the chat because the Business Benefits Finder is a great tool from the federal government. Oh, actually, where does this take me? No, that is taking me to the blueprint, I think. So the blueprint is in the chat, so you can check that out but the business benefits finder is one that you should also check out because it allows you to fill in the blanks about your business and then it spits out all the different mm -hmm. grants and uh, resources that the federal government has to support your business. So I'll grab this link as well and I'll put this into the chat for you. Let's see here. All right, so if I go back, let me see, where did I leave off? Oh, no, down here. Okay, so let's jump out of this. 
oh, my screen just went blank. So to start with some of the grants that are currently out there. So a grant that I've seen a good amount of people start to get funding through is the Black Entrepreneur Grant Program that the Black Opportunity Fund has put together. So it's in partnership with CIBC. So CIBC created a loan program, which is up to $250,000 $250, uh, that you can get as a loan. And actually I'll pull that up really quickly. And you will get a follow-up email with, these, uh, with the slide deck and the links just in case I don't put them all into the chat. Oh, it's okay up here. All right. So this loan, you'll notice that it has two sections to it. So you can get a loan of up to 250000 or a grant of up to 2000 So what the grant does is help, it can help you prepare for the loan, let's say, if you don't have your business plan done or you need to increase your credit score, you need a bit of uh, credit coaching. So you'll see back here, there's a list of supports that you can get. So increasing your financial literacy, creating your business plan, creating your financial projections and improving your credit score. So as you're working through any of these workshops, you also qualify for the grant, which is up to $2,000. One thing that people have said is they might not be interested in the loan portion of it. They just wanted to go through the programming and get the grant. You are able to go to elevateblackbusiness.ca, which is done through the Black Chamber, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. So you can go here. All right, and I'll put, ah, this site is down. Why is this down? Let me see. Okay, so the, this site is down, but I'm pretty sure the Chamber's main site is up. So what I'll do is I'll put this link into the chat. And then if you come to the website, uh, email them and let them know that you're interested in their Elevate Black Business Program, that would get you enrolled into their grant program, which is up to $2,000. All right, so the next grant that we wanted to touch on is through Digital Main Street. So Digital Main Street has a few streams. So on this link, I'll put this link into the chat as well. And you'll see they have a few programs. I'll focus on the Ontario ones. So the, the best, one, well, I mean, they're all good, but I would say the quickest one to access is their shop here one. So if you are looking to upgrade your website or add e-commerce or build a new e-commerce store from scratch, this shop here program is really good. You fill out the form, a representative contacts you and they work alongside you to get your Shopify store done. So we've had a lot of actually uh, success with uh, people from the network going through the program and at least getting their Shopify store built. And it's really as easy as just putting, answering these questions here. So if you would like support with improving your e-commerce store or building a new one, even if you have one already and you want to add different elements to it, one thing that they helped one of our clients with was adding the uh, print on demand. I think it's through Printify and Printful. So if you want to actually sell products that have your images on them, they were able to help them add that to their website so that they can do the print on demand. Another program that they have launched is the Canada Digital Adoption Program. All right, I did see a question. So there's a grant aspect. So they don't give funding for the website. They just help you build it. So they would build it for free. The Canada Digital Adoption Program would now get you up to $2,400 
to be able to help with the online marketing side of it. So this is where developing like e-commerce or working with advisors. One uh, caveat with this one is that you do have to have an employee, uh, you have to have a payroll account. So if you don't have a payroll account and paying at least one employee, from what I understand is you don't qualify for this one. Actually, let me check the criteria focuses it. Uh, really quickly, the things that you can spend it on. So you can spend it on software, uh, also a bit of hardware for 20%, and then the implementation of a digital commerce plan. So that's where like using online, Oh, and these two. So building out your website optimization, uh, back office solutions, the social media advertising. This is where most people use the money is just to help with boosting up the uh, marketing. But you can also hire an, a digital marketing agency to help with you. But I wanted to find the eligibility, actually. Let me log in because it does talk about needing to have an employee. All right, so one thing I would suggest if you don't have a digital Main Street account just yet, go to the website that I put into the chat and at least create your account. So let's see. So it doesn't say it here, but I think when you go into it, it tells you that you do need to have an employee or maybe they took it out. Let's see, it must be for profit must be registered, sole proprietor or incorporated, the consumer facing. So this is where it talks about, you do need to have at least one employee on payroll that isn't your, the owner or a contractor. Or you've had at least 30,000 in annual revenue in the most recent year. Okay. So you might not have to have payroll as long as your business has been generating more than $30,000 in sales. So keep that in mind. And so, yeah, either way, I would register for this one. The final one, which we had been waiting for it to relaunch. So the RAISE program is a $10,000 grant. RAISE stands for, oh my gosh, Racialized and Indigenous Support for Entrepreneurs. Let me make sure I got that right. Uh oh, computers, I think my computer is getting overheated here. Let's see if it is frozen. All right, so yes, Racialized and Indigenous Support for Entrepreneurs you're able to get up to uh, $10,000 to support with, again, mostly to support with the online development of it. And you do go through a structured coaching program in partnership with Parkdale Innovation Center. So when they open their eligibility, and so I am logged in, so let me see. Yeah. the link to register isn't here yet. So I'm going to follow up with them to see if you can still apply through the website or do you have to apply directly to Parkdale? You'll see some of the eligible costs here. So you can bring on our professional services to help with uh, the marketing side of it. You can do print and signage for the company for your marketing. You can help with digital transformation. So building your website, doing digital marketing or getting specific software. You can put together a POS system and you can go through training and certification. 
so this grant, because again, it's the most money up to $10,000, I have seen as being one of the better grants. Some of the eligibility just to check through. So you do need to be registered in Ontario. This one's an Ontario focused one. Employing one to 10 full-time equivalent employees and equivalent including sole proprietor. So you can be a sole proprietor and that's equivalent to employee. So, but you can't be a franchise and you cannot be a wholesaler or manufacturer and you cannot be a nonprofit or a charity. All right, it does need to be owned by an indigenous, black or racialized individual, uh, 18 years or older and Canadian citizen or permanent residence. All right, so this is the process. So you do the initial application. There's an online training component. The two to 10 hours of business coaching is done by the Parkdale. And then you would, you would complete the training and the coaching, and then you fill out a transformation plan. That's when they disperse uh, the funds for you. All right. So I'll just slow down a little bit just to make sure that there's, if there's any other questions. Otherwise, I'll jump to the next grant that we're going to talk about. All right, so as this is loading, this one is called BAIDS, so the Business Advisory and Implementation Development Services. Uh, the form is quite light, so you can actually finish this this evening. Sometimes we stop the presentation and have people fill it out right away. One thing that representatives from the BBPA have said is that they are taking on more applications. So I know a lot of people had applied, so the queue got full. I believe that they are working through the queue. So definitely reach out, especially if you've applied before, reach back out to let them know, hey, just checking in on the status of my application. If you have not applied before, it'd be a good time to apply. Let me put this link into the chat. And so you can see what to expect when you click the apply button. Oh, it's actually here already. So it's asking for standard contact information. It does ask for your photo ID. The main two questions is when you're asking the principal activities of the business, and provide a brief story of your business. So this is one thing that if you haven't created a Google document where you're kind of saving information or a Google Keep, which is their notes platform, similar to Evernote or I mean Notepad, but when you answer these questions, save them in a document so that you can reference it for other applications that you're gonna find. Because I know people get stuck when you see this question and you kind of have to answer it all from scratch. So if you haven't saved it already, do it at least 100 words. I'd say in your document, you want it to be about 500 words and you can edit it. And that is it for this one. So the link is in the chat. I would apply for this Bates program. So what they do, and I'll scroll to where you can select the services so out of these so they connect you with an expert service provider either in accounting or bookkeeping uh, developing business plans or budgeting or legal services and then the service provider would complete the work for you and they invoice the bbpa directly so that you don't have to come out of pocket for these uh, these services so that's how the Bayes program works it isn't a direct grant to the business. It's actually them covering business services for you. And the three that they have is accounting, a business planning and budgeting, and legal. All right, so as I go to the next one, uh, something that I noticed a lot of our youth miss. So even if you are not under 29, please do share the word about Summer Company. And Summer Company is done through the Ontario Small Business Centers. So most cities would have an uh, entrepreneurship center. And through the entrepreneurship center, they run Summer Company. So in the summer, students are able to get up to $3,000 to support their business. And really, it's a way for them to test a business idea, or if they're already running something, they can get additional an additional grant to grow it. 
So really the eligibility is that they're in high school, college, university, or at least planning to go back in September. They do need to live in Ontario. This is an Ontario grant uh, between 15 and 29 they say are not already running a business, but I have seen those get approved that at least have a business idea and maybe have done it part-time, but you can't be like full-time just running your business. You do have to be a student and then wanting to test out the business in the summer. All right, and they talk about not going to another job for more than 12 hours and that you're expected to be returning to school. So please help me spread the word to any high school, college, or university students that want to start a business or maybe have an idea on the side, they can get a grant for their business out of 3,000. All right. Okay, a grant that I saw come online recently is through Jobber. So for those that don't know what Jobber is, it's actually a appointment, a service-based appointment platform. So we've used the Jobber uh, platform before as a way for people to book appointments on detailing nights. And now they've created a specific grant program for those that deliver home services. So if you are a business that goes to people's homes, so you could be cleaner, car cleaner, uh, a, mate, a contractor person, Painter, I think they show here, you can actually apply for, I believe the max is 15,000. Let's see, so 25 awarded across four categories. Let me see here. All right, so yeah, they're talking about uh, home services. Oh, these are the four categories. So home services career builders who help hardworking people build meaningful careers, smooth operators who run a small business for themselves, and community caretakers who take, who give back to the communities where they work or live. Interesting. Let me see. When you go to apply, I'll say, let me see this. How does the grant apply to you? Yeah, so I know it is focused on the service industry and for-profit, it's showing who got it before. Oh, who's Brendan? I have to reach out and say congrats. So the application process, pretty straightforward from what I saw. We did help a few clients already apply for this one. So I would, let me actually put this, this is the application link, but let me get the, the information link as well. I'll grab that in a sec. Oh, type form, type form's not gonna show it properly. It's gonna go one by one. And this thing is taking long. So here's the link to get more information about it. Uh, let's see a quick question. Have you seen anyone get approved for the 2400 digital Main Street grant that has not made 30K in annual sales or does not have one employee? I haven't seen that. So it does have to be one or the other. So yeah, I haven't seen anybody that has gotten it without those two things. So yeah, it should be at least one of those. And then I'm gonna see if I can get through a little bit of this. Let's see what they're asking. All right, so yeah, it's asking, do you own or plan to start? Oh, so you can be thinking about starting one. And they wanna know which area. So let's say we're in automotive, how long we've been in business. So these are the four options. Your services keep our homes and offices safe and running smooth, safe and running. You help hardworking people build meaningful careers. That's so, that's such a weird, like what industry would that be? Well, I guess maybe computers and IT. 
but based on these other questions, oh, they actually have mobile car wash too. I probably should have selected that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. You run a smooth business for you and your customers, and you give back to communities in the way that you can click this. You can't even click this. And I feel like one in three, you could be both. So I mean, hey, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Oh, and you can explain more. And then they collect full. So that is actually the only question. I think that's the only question that they ask. Because when you go to the next one, it's all just your contact info. So imagine that. How do you go back? Uh oh, I can't go back. So you see that first part where it asks those four questions and I had copied and pasted that section, you can actually fully explain what you do. You have a thousand character limit. So don't do what I just did where I just posted, pasted that one line. That's the only question where you can actually explain what you do. And then once you hit continue, you can't go back. So FYI, uh, let's see what else grants do we have? I just wanted to touch on this FedEx grant. So this one, they're actually going through their finalists. So they're giving 10 winners, $30,000. But this one was open a couple months ago and we had talked about it. So if you're interested in seeing who the top 100 are, I'll put that in the chat for you. All right. But the last grant that I want to share with you is from the DMZ. So the Black Innovation Program has three different streams. And they do focus a bit more on tech companies. So whether it's Launchpad, Free Incubator, or Incubator, I would definitely check it out if you're running a tech company. I'll put this into the chat as well and or spread the word to anybody that you know. And that's the benefits finder. All right. So to switch gears to nonprofit grants. One sec. So the main uh, grant writing working group that we had done recently was for the Youth Opportunities Fund. I mean, the Ontario Trilly Foundation, they have grants that are active ongoing, but I've seen the most success with especially new grant writers through the Youth Opportunities Fund. That was one of the first bigger grants that we were able to get for uh, Detailing Nights and the Knighthood Academy that we had put together, but you'll see they have like Brazilian Communities Fund, Community Investment Grants. Uh, the Youth Opportunities Fund is the one that we were talking about. Uh, the Community Building Fund, Economic Recovery and Resilience Fund. So if you're interested in any of these grants and need support with the writing side of it or just a deeper dive, please let us know because we could do working groups about it or we can just support your organization on it. To give you an example of the Youth Opportunities Fund, you can get up to $85,000 for either one year or each year for three years. And it is focused on youth-led projects that support youth in the community. So if you are looking to do something more family-oriented, I would point you towards the Family Innovations Test Grant, where parents and guardians of youth can actually apply and put in their own application as well. So there's youth-led initiatives, which is the youth innovations, and then family initiatives, which can be adult-led uh, parents or uh, caregivers. All right, another one that I wanted to show. So I mentioned the investment readiness program. 
that is part of the social finance fund that the, the federal government had put together. So the social finance fund was an $800 million pool of, dollar, pool of funds to support and invest into social enterprises. What they noticed that a lot of social enterprises weren't ready to take on investment, repayable investment. So they created the investment readiness program as a grant that would go to social enterprises to help them get ready to take on bigger investment. So the last cycle did close. I know they're doing their announcements of who got the funding for the investment readiness program. So the next stage is the social finance fund, which they're going to be announcing shortly, and they're going to be putting out that call for investment into social enterprises. So definitely look out for that. As it becomes live, we'll definitely share and let you know. But the Toronto Enterprise Fund, another similar one that supports social enterprises that are employment social enterprises. So if you're hiring from a segment of the population that is finding it difficult to find work and your company is able to get them work, you'd be considered a social enterprise, an employment social enterprise. And I see the question I heard, they didn't get funding to continue, is that true? So the budget, the federal budget did come out, I believe it was last week, and there was no additional dollars put for the IRP, the Investment Readiness Program to continue. So like I said, that cycle looks like it's done. Now they're going to be focused on the social finance fund. So there's about $700 million that are going to be invested into social enterprises. So those won't be grants. And it can be different types of investment, whether it's equity, debt, convertible notes or loans. That is to be determined, but those will be investments and not grants. So keep keep. Keep watching out for how they roll that out because I'm quite interested to see what it's going to look like. So yeah, sorry, the Community Services Recovery Fund, that one is closed. The Ontario Grant Portal, that one's always open. Let me just go to it real quick. So at any given time, there's usually between 20 to 25 grants available. Oh, where is my, oh, you're yeah, there in various realms of the ecosystem. So if you do see one that resonates with you, as a nonprofit, typically do lean towards uh, charities, but you can navigate this as just an incorporated nonprofit. It is good to have collaborators and work with partners when you're going after Ontario grants. So if there's one here that you're interested in, let our team know so that we can maybe connect you with another nonprofit that can support you with your application. All right. And so the working group, again, the most recent one was for the Youth Opportunities Fund. Uh, that one did close, but we're going to do another one the last week of May because the Youth Opportunities Fund is going to open on May the 31st. So if that's something that is of interest. Stay tuned for that working group. But other than that, uh, some of the loan programs, I mean, really quickly, there's some micro loan ones uh, like Access Community Capital Fund, ACBN, we have our micro loan program, Rise Asset Development, uh, the FACE Coalition has their loan program up to 250,000, Futurepreneur has theirs up to 60,000, and Alterna has a partnership with BDC to do up to 50,000 as well. You'll notice some of the banks have come online with their Black Entrepreneurship Loan programs, uh, RBC, CIBC, BMO, uh, Scotia Bank also did launch theirs kind of in secret. I, I saw a press release for it, but nobody at Scotia Bank seems to know what I'm talking about when I go there and ask about it. But if you bank at Scotia, do go and ask and see if somebody can help you navigate. And those ones are up to 250,000 as well. All right. And as I mentioned, if this feels overwhelming, don't miss out on it just because uh, it's difficult to find the time to research and then do the writing. We are here to support you with getting those applications in. So if you do need a team to work with, a project team on a, either a grant that you find or uh, help with researching and finding grants for you, hey, we want to see you win. So lean on us to help you get them in and don't miss it just because uh, it gets a bit uh, overwhelming. 
one thing to keep in mind, there are different ways to engage with our company. So either through Grant Hunter University, which more which is more self-paced uh, online learning course where you can go through all the videos that we've done, get the templates, which help you do the work plan, the budget, and tell the story of your project. That is only 297. Again, if you just need help with strategy or a funding summary, or if you need help with full writing, that ranges between $500 to 3,000. One thing I would say, a lot of times people reach out to me and they say, oh, I saw a grant and I couldn't, I tried to apply and then I got distracted. If there's something that you wanna go for, lean on us that can help you get it done. I know sometimes it's difficult to find the money to actually hire people, but that is something that we can also help you with. A lot of times you need capital to take your business to the next milestone. Ask for that help and see if we can connect you to either grants that actually are available to help you uh, get this type of support, or even if it's a micro loan to help you get uh, initial support with doing your bookkeeping or getting an application in. I probably wouldn't use a loan to do grant writing, but there's other options. I'm just saying, take advantage of all the resources and tools at your disposal and lean on organizations that are part of this Black entrepreneurship ecosystem to get you that support so that you can get this stuff done. All right. Again, I want to thank you for being present. I believe we do have a bit of time for questions, so feel free. Uh, the floor is open where you could raise your hand and uh, I'll make sure to uh, call on you. But these Wednesdays, so once a month, usually the second Wednesday of each month, we'll be back. I'll be doing as much research as I can to see what grants are available that we can apply for. And in between, we are gonna be doing these grant info session, the actual writing groups. So if you see a grant that you're interested in, definitely reach out and maybe we can do a working group about it, or we're gonna pick a grant and then as a, as a group, make sure and write that grant to get applications in. I, I feel a little jaded, the investment readiness program. Uh, we were doing those info sessions. Apparently they only gave out 25 out of 400 applications. I thought they were gonna give out more, but it was good to see five of the people that went through our program were part of the 25 that got funded. So I'll take that as a win. And also I wish that they gave out more money. But let me slow down. And Brenda, I see your hands up. Did you want to ask a question? Yeah, the grant writing workshop working groups. Is that just specific to the Youth Opportunities Fund? The one that we most recently did, yes. And then we we're going to pick another grant and do another working group around it. So the theme will be that specific grant. Right, and yes. So you'd have to... If it's youth opportunities, it'd be youth projects. If it's something else, it would be okay. And yeah, um, sometimes we do where it's more around the grand blueprint. So just going through the different sections so that your uh -huh. over your general blueprint is done. And that way you can use it for other grants that you find. But I find it's easier when you pick one and then you can kind of just get it done. Okay. Do you have any experience working on group homes or foster care programs? Any of your no. applicants? Because that's what we, I'm working on. Yeah, we worked with a group, group home, but specific grants that support group homes, I haven't written any of those. It's yet. not really grants. It'd be the application to apply for a license. Gotcha. So it's okay. not quite a grant, but, but it's still yeah. the, the application process. So that's what I'm working on. The area that you're looking at, so you need a zone for that or it's already zoned for that? Say that again, I need a zone. What do you mean by zone? Yeah, the area that you're looking to put the home in? No, I, I'm sorry, I'm not ask, understanding your question. What's oh, the question? Sure, like, do you have a home already that you're gonna be uh, applying for or are you still looking to find the home? Both, both. There's uh, one person who has a home Gotcha. Another, one, another one is looking. Yeah, because that's where we got hit up a few roadblocks. We had the home 
and yeah. we have to get the area zoned. That's for the right. That's right. And they are and, very and vicious at blocking that. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah. So yeah. And happy to support where we can, but uh, yeah, we've been part of that process before. Okay. Okay. I'm just um, wondering whether I'd benefit from one of your 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 working groups, but if it's not the topic, then yeah. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Great uh, idea. Is there any other questions? Otherwise, I can give you three minutes back to your day. But I, I just want to add the DMZ. I, I did apply for the DMZ with another organization. It was fairly simple to, to apply. And so, you did go through a number of modules. So you have to spend some time going through the modules to learn each step. So, But great. it was useful. And, and they did provide hands-on support. So it, you're right. There's stuff out there that's available. And I like that it can connect into like their other programs yeah. so they can yeah. really work alongside you on the journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. No, oh, my pleasure. Thanks for being here. Uh, yeah. If there's any other questions, otherwise, again, I, I it's not lost on me, you being present. I know there's so many other things that can take your time. So I do want to thank you. I hope this is of value. I truly hope there's one of these grants that you want to go for. If you feel stuck, please lean on us. We will put, I'll put the email in the chat. Any and every question that you have, feel free to ask. It is literally our mandate to be here to support you. So put pressure on us to actually support you with your business or your nonprofit. Oh, uh, Sophia. Am I, I'm, I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. Hold on. Hi, so, hi, Mr. Ryan. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Always good to see you. <laughs> it's good to be here, finally. <laughs> um, well, I make it sometimes. I know you're busy. Yeah. Um, so I did have a question about Jobber. Um, I, I did take a look at that grant and um, understanding that the grant is for services that you're providing to people in their homes. Is that correct? Or yes. at their homes? Because if I want to pull it up. That's again. where I got a little bit lost. I'm like, so are they supporting people who have home-based businesses or are they providing the grant to people who provide service to the clients at their homes? At their home, right. So it's not home-based businesses. Okay. It is those that do services at clients' homes, yes. Okay, so then my other question is, what if your business does both? Would they still consider you? Yeah, the fact that you're home-based isn't what they're asking. So as long okay. as you're providing services at people's homes, that's the only thing that they're asking. Okay, all right. It's actually, so I... they don't want it if you only have a brick and mortar and people have to come to you. That's the only thing that they want to make sure that you actually go to people's houses. Yeah, no, no, no. That that is part of the service that I offer. That right. I go to actual, I go to people's homes, whether it's just they just want me to come to their homes to do service, or yeah. it's maybe because they had a surgery and so they can't leave mm -hmm. their homes, or they're seniors, so it's just easier for me to go to them than for them to come to me. That's excellent. So. Hey, I'm going to follow up with you and make sure that application gets in. In fact, I should get you to share your screen and you should do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on my phone because I'm going on the road. No, it's okay. I'm, but I will follow up with you because it's literally one main question. So let's get it done. Excellent. Thank you so much for this info session. I'm so happy I made it today. <laughs> oh, appreciate you. Yes. Thanks so much. Have a good day, everyone. All right. So yeah, everyone, you can have a great rest of the afternoon. We shall touch base if we see you at the working group or at the next info session. Please feel free. Again, this information will come in the email follow up. So feel free to share. And hey, if there's a grant that you see that I missed, definitely share it with me so that we can get it out to the folks. But have a good rest of the day.